What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Dead Box Podcast. My name is Cisco. And Boaz. And today we are going to be talking about a topic that's quite controversial uh, in the sense of what we are going to be talking about. <laughs> well, I-, I wouldn't say super controversial. I think just as a disclaimer before we start this episode, uh, not, none of what we're saying is out of spite or... I guess in bad faith. Yes. Yeah. Of we're, we're just, uh, we are just observers. Yeah. In looking the at community. it objectively. Yeah. Uh, we are in a unique position just because we're part of the industry and the community. Yep. Uh, and we just wanted to kind of state our observations and as well as, um, I guess, not advice, but, you know, kind of make some suggestions to overall improve the health of the community. So uh, if, if you yes. guys are members of the community and or uh i guess influencers yep. or celebrities that happen to be watching our content first of all thank you yes uh second of all take none of what we say personally uh we're not gonna we're not gonna try to name any names yeah uh, we're not gonna be calling people out but i guess just take it into heart and consider the bigger picture the overall health of the community and industry yeah we're gonna be talking about topics that we have seen a lot of um YouTube, airsoft celebrities, not influencers. YouTube. Not just YouTube, but all of social media. Yeah, all of social media, airsoft celebrities, quote unquote. You know the influencers that we all see, um, and you know just what we typically see because there is a lot of bad that gets posted, and it kind of just shines a bad light. Well, let's on not airsoft. start. With, let's not start with the bad. So we're gonna okay. go over the good. All right, and the bad, and then finally the hopeful. What do we hope? Yes. Right. So, uh, we're, again, we're not here to call anybody out. That's not that's not the point of this mm-hmm. this podcast. We're just we're just going to state our observations. So we'll start with the good, obviously, because because <laughs> believe it or not, you know, uh, airsoft or what we call it airsoft celebrity, you know, YouTubers that are big or have a name for themselves out on YouTube and on other social media platforms. Yep. For example, Instagram. TikTok or TikTok, even though TikTok doesn't really like Airsoft. I, yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know how, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do that either. We yeah. were on TikTok for a little we bit, got but we sucked got sucked so hard, so quick, <laughs> so hard, so fast. <laughs> but um, yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, they're the forefront. They're the forefront members of the community. Yep. Right, and they directly influence how the community behaves. They they model community behavior, whether they agree with it or not. Yeah. And uh, at the end, it, it drives people to airsoft. It keeps people playing airsoft. It gets people into airsoft. Oh yes. It introduces sure. people that are not in airsoft to try airsoft. So they're actually they have a very big impact. What whether they admit it or not, they have a very big impact on the industry. Absolutely. I mean, even we were talking about this off camera of like. Uh, even we are considered influencers, which is quite strange to us because, um, like, we are a couple of regular dudes that love to play airsoft that want to grow airsoft. Yeah, we just happen to work yeah. in the industry. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's it's actually very interesting, you know, when we go out to fields and we get recognized. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, but all right. First, why don't we go off and just talk about. Uh, I guess the good part of what we see nowadays in the airsoft community, like on the internet as a whole, like how these influencers positively influence or positive put a positive message on airsoft out out in out there in the interwebs. Okay, well, uh, I mean, first off, just making airsoft content is good because uh, we don't have uh, like a way or a space to you know show airsoft uh in a positive light outside of our community you know when we see um like youtube videos that will float around mainly they come from like youtube but then you'll see them on like twitter or facebook randomly sometimes um you know it's it's good because it exposes more people to airsoft and hopefully you know exposing it to people that don't know about airsoft um that have never heard of it so they can get eyes on it they can be like oh what is that oh that that looks cool let me dive into that a little bit yeah and, and also i have my get own them cons- to join. i have my own conspiracy theory about uh influencers in airsoft 
uh, it's, it's nothing controversial, but I think, uh, for example, like our channel specifically and all their uh, channels that are retailer based, mm. I think the algorithm knows that we are retailers. I'm fairly sure. Uh, yeah, I think at this point, the algorithm is advanced enough to know that we're trying to sell product. Yes. Uh, it's because, you know, we link we link products and stuff to oh, our yes. website and stuff. So I think the algorithm has figured it out, which I think that's the reason why uh, the algorithm is kind of downplaying a lot of our content. That's what we notice uh, oh, yes. based on like our, our social feeds and stuff and our analytics. Uh, but with an Airsoft influencer, like a just like a one person that just makes Airsoft content, I think the algorithm treats them differently. Yes. So at the end of the day, uh, a lot of these influencers, they have actually a way bigger reach than we can ever have because, oh, yeah. because of the algorithm. Yep. I mean, that is something that we are striving to break. And, you know, we have made airsoft content that isn't like the you know review or hey buy this you know because we want to be something different you guys are going to you know find the information from multiple sources uh even when we do videos we try to be as informative as possible but you know it's going to be written down on a product page somewhere or you know someone else is going to do a, a review about it so we try to show that we are um, you know, people behind the the product, people behind uh, the lens, and you know, <clears throat> show that we're not just here selling a product, but you know, we are players. We are a part of the community. We go out to the fields, we go out to events, we hang out with you guys, we kick it. And um, what you said, uh, because of the, I don't know, maybe thousands of reviews that are on the channel, even from. Uh, people that have held the GI marketing seat before. It's just the way that we get categorized. Yeah, and I think another big positive of uh, Airsoft influencers are, I, I hate the word celebrity, but like, yeah. yeah, Airsoft personalities online is that uh, they each breathe their own life into the hobby. Oh, yeah. So because of how diverse Airsoft is as a hobby, you know, again, some people are really into Milsim. Mm -hmm. they, they really enjoy, you know, dressing up and replicating kits that they see online on photos of like military photos and stuff or. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they just love the, the whole immersion aspect of it and the, re the realism of yep. it. And, you know, they're, they're getting to Airsoft that way. Uh, there's some people that, again, like on the opposite end of the spectrum who are speed softers and, you know, they, they play, they treat Airsoft more like a sport. Oh, yeah. Very yeah, competitive. So it's, it's competitive. There's competition involved. And uh, and there's, of course, your average, you know, day play. You know, airsofters yep. uh, who who take it more casually. So so each of these uh, influencers online, they all have their own spin on it. You know, some some content creators are more Milsim oriented. Oh yes. So they post. You know, they go to large events and stuff. They go to Milsim events and they they recap uh, those events, yep. which you know make the Milsim community look super cool. Oh yes. And then there's the Speedsoft side of things where you know there's more like Speedsoft influencers out there that you know they they play at SpeedQB tournaments or they play tournaments. Oh yes. And they play competitive style gameplay, which makes that community look also very cool. Mm -hmm. And then you also have people that are more so in the middle that just you know they they just play on a weekend. Yeah. They, they play to play. Yeah, they play to play, and again, it just makes that look really fun and really desirable. Oh yes, and I think that's one of the the main benefits. And also, you know, each of them they have their own personal touch. They add their own personal touch, uh, regardless of whether people will accept or or deny this fact or this claims that everyone has their own biases. Oh yes, you know, so so more people gravitate towards certain biases over others, and because of that, you know, they, that's like the personal touch. And yes. I think that personal touch really draws people in because it, it shows like, hey, like, you know, the airsoft community isn't filled filled with a bunch of weirdos. Like, there's a bunch of <laughs> cool, yeah, there's a bunch of nah. cool people. Nah, okay, we're all weirdos. Yeah, yeah we nah. are. Okay, we are to a certain extent, but you know, there, there's, there's there's different flavors of weirdos. For example, like I'm a weirdo because I like airsoft, and I like, uh, you know, I like miniature war gaming and stuff. And, I don't find that and, weird. and my and my brother is into like Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic the Gathering anime. And I think they're a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> so I mean, I don't so, find that weird so, either. So, so <laughs> again, but there's different flavors of of weirdness that everyone's drawn to. Uh, okay, you know, we, we tolerate a I, tier. I, yeah, of exactly. Yeah, weirdness. Yeah. <laughs> and again, and, and again, I might be the weird one for thinking other hobbies, other certain niche hobbies are weird. You know, for all I know, most of you guys might be into all of that. Yeah, and that's and that's totally fine. I, I have nothing against you guys, but. Uh, but again, just that personal touch that a lot of these uh, content creators out there, you know, have on their videos, 
that basically you know it makes it makes them special, makes them unique, and yeah. it draws it draws people. It's the personality yeah. mm-hmm. behind yeah. the personality. But at the, end of, but, but at the end of the day, right? They are the model. They're model community members. Yep. So uh, based on how they behave on these videos, right? It it, it kind of gives people who are not into airsoft. Uh, thing like, oh, like this is what the community looks like. Yeah, this is a how general. People, yeah, sense. this is how people behave. You know, in this I agree community. to that. Yeah, so so they they do model, uh, I guess, behavior. Yes. You know, within the airsoft community, and I think, uh, I think for the most part, they there are like they they do a really good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do a really good job at uh, at modeling that kind of behavior, and uh, I think. There's a lot of people. I think there are a lot of kids and even older guys like us that uh, get into airsoft because they have watched, you know, those videos. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And then you know they they watch a gameplay video and they watch like the loadout videos and stuff that these content creators make and they're like, wow, this stuff looks really fun. It looks really cool. Oh yeah. Yeah, and and they get into the the hobby that way. Which, again, I think that's where most of the drive comes from. Most I think nowadays. Airsoft has proliferated the way that it has now because of those influencers. I don't know the meaning of proliferated. It means <laughs> it means it has grown. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it sorry. has turned into it has evolved into uh, what it is now. And that makes sense. I mean, like what you said earlier about how each uh, content creator has their own like style uh, to their videos and stuff. I do agree to that because like I will watch one channel for uh, more Milsom style, and then I would watch another for like really fast paced CQB, and then um, you know uh, even if I'm just looking into like other products and stuff too, like I'll browse too. Like I like to see like what's trending, what's new, um, and uh, you know see what everyone is about. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think another good take on airsoft content creators that's also positive is they offer a second opinion. Yes. So you know, th- there's a lot of retailers like us that have their own YouTube channels and their own social media, and they review products. Yep. Uh, I I don't want to be too cynical about it. Like we we try to be fairly neutral. Yes. Uh, a bit more on the positive side, obviously, because we're a retailer, but we try to be as neutral as possible. Yeah. But again, at the end of the day, yeah, like. We're, we're no different than other retailers. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we do have our own biases, whether we are aware of it or not. And I'm sure most of you guys know because we're people, we're humans. Yeah. And, you know, having a second opinion from another content creator uh, will help players make a more informed decision about what to buy. Yeah. And, you know, where, where oh, yeah. to get, yeah. Or It's just like a review. Like if you're, you know, shopping online for something and, and the one product has like, uh, like, I don't know, anywhere from like a few dozen to a few hundred reviews, you're going to look at them. You're going to see, you know, get all the information that you can out of something. Yeah. uh, In the end, for product's sake, to, you know, make an educated uh, decision and hopefully purchase. Yeah, especially, you know, with certain content creators, they'll review guns and they'll actually play whole games with them. Mm -hmm. Um, That's something that we just don't have. Uh, the time to do yep yeah because obviously you know we're we're helping a company run yeah and so we don't necessarily have you know the time to do that but yep uh you know we so 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 that's why you know we we take it out to the the range out on the back and we 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 try to replicate you know a field condition but not not completely perfectly you know yeah Uh, but a lot of these content creators they'll review a gun and they're like oh let's go play with it and I think that's super dope because you could actually get real life. Yeah, the gameplay. Kind of, yeah, gameplay to really like see action. how. A, yeah, to see how a gun performs out on a field, uh, whether it's for the gun's benefit or not. Uh, which, yeah. Which I think is super dope. Yeah, I agree to that. Um, but outside of like the product review, um, a content creator. You know what you said earlier about their personality is going to show in their videos and you know it's going to show generally if someone's a douchebag or not right well that that's that's more towards the negative side which we'll get to in a bit okay but, <laughs> yeah um but what are some other positives that well that uh, so we were saving this topic yeah. for uh uh another podcast but um 
how what we talked about how uh you know you'll see random airsoft videos uh on youtube or oh yeah 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 they'll they'll other places yeah as I, i'm not a super fan of these like it, it's all it started out with like facebook pages for sure and mm. I, I don't know instagram also has it but like there's like there's what, what what are some really good ones like there's some like very like generic like gaming facebook pages or like cool mm-hmm. video facebook page that like post like random content that like they would deem like engaging or yeah. interesting right yeah <laughs> uh like for example like sniper compilations oh yeah that's like the like the number one thing that i saw yeah, like, yeah. back in advertised. the 2010s yeah back in the 2010s that was huge yeah everyone yeah, loved that yeah and yeah it was super cool regardless of their if the audience members were airsoft players or not yeah it's just super cool and satisfying to like watch a sniper like with a very well-tuned sniper rifle yeah just take out you know enemy players across the field yep and i i think that really helped airsoft blow up I, oh I for sure say, yeah during the the mid 2010s and I, I don't really see that much as much nowadays I, yeah I, I generally don't which is which is kind of sad I think it's but, the highlight videos we don't mm-hmm, see as much. Mm-hmm, we do yeah. see a lot of gameplay footage. Like yeah, at yeah, least yeah. I have uh, seen a lot of gameplay where they're giving the first person of them running around, and then they'll cut to when they aim their gun, yeah. and then it'll go down to the to the gun yeah, cam yeah, yeah, and yeah, show yeah. that. Yeah. But um, like it was stuff like that that helped, uh, you know, get word out of airsoft in a positive way. Yeah. Because eat like. You know, algorithms are always changing. Yeah. And uh, with everyone listening in. <laughs> yeah. But but those are but it helps so it helps draw so many people into the hobby. For example, like those sniper compilation videos, those YouTube channels of those people blew even, up. E- e- even though it was like stolen content. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> uh, That's but that. borderline unethical. But at the, at the very at, at the very minimum, they credit the YouTube channel. That they stole the clip from. Yeah, true. Uh, and and those channels like blew the heck up, like yeah. almost almost overnight. And you know those, all those subscribers, all those you know views that link back to the original YouTube channel of the creator. You know those are all people that are interested in the hobby at the yep. very least. Yeah. You know, and again, yeah, helps really blow up or to help move airsoft seen see help airsoft be seen in a positive light. But also, in addition, like it just draws so many extra players that you know we can play with. Hopefully, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, going back to like uh, the like those compilations and stuff, it worked. Like mm-hmm. it got to a point where, I mean, we were talking about it in the South Park episode. Yeah, you know, it's getting more mainstream now, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is good. Yeah. So, uh, like, we were talking about it before, like how. Uh, like airsoft being like a, a topic of an entire episode of South Park is huge mm-hmm. because especially since South Park it has been around for a, a long time. They have a huge fan base. They have, you know, and they're very they're very on point with a lot of like their commentary on pop culture. Yeah, so that means airsoft should have been big enough for the creators of South Park to know about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys are long term or long time watchers of South Park, you know that they are very much into commenting on like the hot thing mm. in society, right? Like all the pop culture. So I I thought it was huge that Airsoft made it out there. Hell yeah, you know, for which sure. Means tons of people are talking about it, so it is becoming more mainstream. Oh yeah, yeah and it's all thanks to content creators out there yep. that are pushing Airsoft out into the mainstream more than us retailers could ever possibly you know do yeah exactly so i mean like having those uh like highlight videos gameplay footage videos is good because not only just for us as airsofters that look for entertainment but to show airsoft in a good light that will help promote it in a way to people who don't know about airsoft or people who heard about it that are getting interested into it they're gonna go to youtube Mm -hmm. like immediately Mm -hmm. to find out what it's about Mm -hmm. and you know all those positive videos of gameplay and you know camaraderie and fun only help airsoft grow as a whole yeah uh so yeah so those are all really i guess all of the positives that we see Mm -hmm. out there uh with you know influencers 
uh, ma- mainly again, it's all publicity, like positive publicity. Yep. You know, they, they set examples of, you know, what the community should look like. And eventually it helps. I guess it helps draw more players in, obviously, potential yep. players. It, it generates more interest and ultimately it pushes out to mainstream, which is that's what we want to do. Of course. Yeah, that, that's what we want to do. So that's, you know, so more people can be introduced to how awesome, you know, this hobby is. But as you mentioned earlier, there are some negative sides. There, there, there are some dark oh, side yes. to, you know, to uh, the celebrity or the influencer sphere as we know it. Uh, I mean, it's not unique to Airsoft. I, I think uh, the problem is, is n- nowadays there are just there are just so many people that you know get pushed into, I guess, the limelight. Yes. There, there are so many people that you quote unquote blow up, right? Like, it's not just unique to airsoft. Uh, you know, you you see oh, yeah. you see these common problems in you know the gaming community, the live streamers. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and even you know your traditional. Hollywood celebrities, uh, you see a lot of these problems uh, that are out there, and it does suck. Yes. You know, again, we're not, we're not, we're going to be going to the negative section. Please, uh, if if you are an aspiring influencer or if you are are already an influencer watching this, again, please don't take anything we say personally. This isn't about you. We're not going to name any names. Yep. And we're just saying this out of love, and you know, it's just observations that we noticed. Yeah. To and, hope. Yeah. And inform. and we encourage. Yeah, we encourage all of you guys actually. Uh, going into this, whether you're an influencer or not, to kind of take what we say to heart to try to, um, I guess, keep the community as healthy as possible. Cause, oh, yes. Yeah, because these are all things that we also take into account. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, when we are playing Airsoft or when we're representing Airsoft, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, one topic that, that we've talked about in the past and I've ranted about are the videos that are highlighting the negative in airsoft mm-hmm. the cheater videos the mag dump videos all of that nonsense you know it, it it sucks because you know people are going to watch that to be like oh man i hope that never happens to me but there's the curiosity of what what happened how did that evolve yeah right? but th- there's a there's a very old saying in uh news the news industry is if it bleeds it leads so Man. yeah, of course, of course, bad news will always get more like, attention. Yes. Than good yes. news, which is why, you know, we, we we are really in very deep into this headline culture, right? Yes. Yeah. So the so they, they, they yeah so they come with this very catastrophic sounding, you know, like title or mm-hmm. headline, with whether whether it's a news article or you know a YouTube video, right? Something very yep. catastrophic sounding, something crazy. So people go, "Oh my gosh, this happened!" They click on it. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, the, the results of that are pre-mixed, but of course, yeah. But there's a reason why it works is because that that's just human psychology, like that's just what we're drawn to. Hmm. I I understand that. It just, you know, it sucks that there are, you know, people out there that are capitalizing on that for their clout. Or yeah, but I I don't think it's as as malicious as uh, some people make it out to be. Uh, for example, there are some yeah there are some YouTube content creators out there that one of their staples is you know doing like cheater call out videos or like, oh I caught so and so cheater on camera. Yeah. And. Uh, it, it does it does it for for me like it is disheartening it is discouraging when i see that uh, i'm not necessarily mad or upset by it because at the end of the day the problem of being a content creator especially on youtube is that social media and especially youtube they reward regular content posting oh yes right? of so course. for example like if you want to continue right making this like content creation or as an influencer if you want to make that a living Yep. You have to post regularly. And like the more frequently you upload, right, the more the algorithm rewards you. Yep. Of right? course. And then at the end of the day, if YouTube or whoever, Instagram, TikTok, if they're cutting you a paycheck, right, like that's a job. Yep. Yeah, that that's a job. And uh, I think because of the YouTube culture, we they very much glorify full time content creators. They glorify that lifestyle a lot. Oh yes. Yeah, that, that's what most people end up pursuing is like, oh yeah, I wanna make playing airsoft, I wanna be making a you know being a youtube airsoft content creator i want to make that a goal which is by the way that that's a great goal yep yeah so we're, we're not discouraging anyone from yeah for sure trying to pursue that but but there's a lot of pressure oh yeah right? there's a lot of pressure 
And, you know, especially if you start to notice that, like, the content that you're creating is not as engaging as it used to be. Mm-hmm. You know, most people have to change it up. And then the easiest way, in my opinion, I think the easiest way to change up uh, in order for you to get views and in order for you to get engagement is the, I guess, what we call, like, the negative side of mm-hmm. Airsoft, right? Because psychologically, we are more drawn to bad news yep right we're more drawn pe- the human mind is more drawn to that yeah it's and the so, juicy yeah exactly you know yeah. so what's going on yeah, it here? is it is sad to see yeah it is it is it really is sad to see uh you know some content creators kind of uh that's one of their staple content is to like call out cheaters and to do that because at the end of the day like sure like in the short term right yeah you do get the views Yep. Right? You, you you do it does pay the bills for you and that that's great we're, we're happy for you that you're able to do that as a living yep but the long-term effects of that is you know how do people see airsoft for example like if you look on forums i mean even back in the day when i was trying to get into airsoft when i was getting into airsoft it was always airsoft versus paintball mm. thank god it's not like that anymore yeah but you know in in the beginning they're like ah oh, paintball is better because you know like there are refs and you could see the paint on you and like you know they, it holds you accountable and you have to you know uh, get out where like airsoft like you know every, any everybody can cheat or whatever well that's that's true to a certain extent yep right but the counter argument to airsoft is like well airsoft is full of honorable players mm-hmm. right like we're all working together like in order for this whole game to work is like if you get shot it's up to you to you know call yourself out yeah and you know there is a level of trust every time we play an airsoft game right there is an unspoken level of trust that we all trust each other yep that, to, follow the yeah, rules. to follow the rules and to call your hits you know it's not perfect sometimes sometimes people get shot sometimes i get shot and i'm not even i'm not even aware that i'm shot true yeah, yeah so sometimes like it's just at the heat of the moment sometimes you know we just don't notice and if someone else tells me hey i think you got shot then i'll be like oh okay and like, and, oh, yeah, yeah and then right, i'll, I'll call, call myself, myself yeah and you know that's i i don't I don't have any complaint about it. Even when I shoot somebody, let's say, and I, I see the BBs hit them and like they're not calling it out, I give them the benefit of the doubt because sometimes they might not even notice that they've been shot. Yep. You know, so I so first thing for me, I don't I don't make a big deal when people are quote unquote cheating. Yeah. Right. So originally it was that, you know, like we, we there there's uh we we would very much like to have the community or we we'll very much like to paint the community as being trustworthy. Yes. Right? That these are honorable people that all agree to the rules of the game and they're all willing, they're all agreeing to make it work. Now, obviously, in reality, that's not always the case. Yes. But when there's, you know, very catchy videos online about, like, you know, people cheating and all this stuff, and especially if that's a mainstay of someone's uh, content. Yep. Right? An outsider will look at that and be like, ah, oh, Airsoft uh, is full of cheaters. Yeah. I don't want to play because everyone's cheating. Full of this cheating. toxicity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, one thing that I would note about these videos is, yeah, it sucks to see. Um, just because as an airsofter, so like, man, there's someone playing the sport that's acting like that. Like, in our community, it hurts on a personal level. Because it's like, damn, I wish that wasn't the case. But at the same time, uh, I look at it and I say, okay, this is how we shouldn't act. This is the example of what we shouldn't do, how we can be better people, better players and respect the rules. And just, you know, it, it's I think it's more of uh, people have a hard time keeping an open mind at the field, especially when they're engaging in, in shooting and they're in the heat of the moment. And especially if they think they're they're tagging someone and if they are in their own right tagging someone and someone is blatantly being a cheater, it is frustrating. I've been I've been on that end. I've been on that end where I'm shooting someone and I see I saw them flinch or you know whatever, and they didn't call the hit and they went behind cover. I'm like, come on, man, what? Why? You're that person is being selfish and ruining the experience with other people. Yeah, I used to be like that, but now it doesn't really bother me that much anymore. Like, oh, yeah, I've, exactly. I've I've encountered you know people that are not calling their hits, and eventually it gets to a certain point where you know I can tell. Oh yeah, it wasn't a mistake. And they just don't want to call their hits. Okay, fine. I'll just walk over to a different area of the field. Yep. And I'll just play with people that actually want to play the game. Mm-hmm. You know, and then at the end of the game, if I remember what that person looked like, I'll just tell the ref quietly, hey, there's a guy, you know, he's, he's wearing like this clothing or he's, he's using this gun or whatever. I don't think he's calling his hits. Yeah, could you, you know, keep an eye on him? Yeah, keep an eye on him, whatever. And, you know, just handle it quietly because, you know, having a freak out and a blowout and a fight order, it ruins the experience for everybody. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I'm here to have fun. Like, the, the moment I get mad is is the moment that I've straight up wasted my money. 
Yes. I straight up now. Now yep. again, yeah. If the whole team is cheating, let's let's just say the entire, you know, other side, which first of all, first of all, never happened to me. I, that's I, never, never happened to me yeah. either. But if hypothetically that was the case, then yeah, then, then maybe there's a. Uh, there is a cause to be upset because you know the referees are not doing their job. Yes. But generally, in my experience, the referees do do a good job because they're paid to do this. Yep. And um, they, they're also they're also players. The referees are also players, so they they understand the integrity of the game. Uh, yeah. But generally, for, for me, like I don't I don't get upset when people cheat anymore. Like I, I just don't think it's really worth the emotional labor. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, see, have you ever been at a field where a fight breaks out? Of course. Like, yeah, the last time I went to a game, a fight almost broke out too. Yeah. See, like, it's it's weird because like not only does it affect the people immediately around, but all the players, all the kids, everyone yeah. that's around there, they're watching that happen. And then the next time you go out to the next game, there's gonna be a a little bit of like yeah. The the last time I went to our local field, a like feeling. yeah, we had to we had to stop the game, which like. In my almost seven years, eight years of going to this field, like that's never happened. Damn. Yeah, and like so, we had to stop the game because because like someone is getting into someone else's face and like you know they're getting very aggressive with each other. Yeah. And so I was talking to one of the guys that that was involved in this. I'm like, yo, like what's going on, man? And they're like, oh, so and so wasn't calling their hits or whatever. And like you know, I was lighting him up, and he he literally just started like running up to me and got on my face and all this stuff. And then he was like, yeah, the next time, whatever I see, I'm just going to keep lighting him. I'm like, listen, man, like, if you just keep handling this on your own, like, you're only going to make the situation worse. Yeah. You know, like, if you, so, you know, I just told him, listen, man, like, I think, you know, the for the next game, I think you should just chill out, you know, maybe take a breather for the next round. And if you do decide to come back on, if you see that player again, honestly, I wouldn't even bother engaging him. Just, yeah. just go to the other side of the field and, like, play with other people who want to play the game yep yeah but uh but but drawing that back towards you know content creation and you know like those those like cheater compilation videos i think another aspect of that which principally for me i find more irritating is like the cheater justice oh he's a cheater so like uh, i have my i have my like 60 rounds per second polar star or dsg and i'm yeah, just gonna light him the seeking heck up revenge yeah 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 uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, but it caters. It caters to that human instinct of like wanting justice. Yeah, and and I get yeah. that, but like what you said, don't put that in your own hands. Mm -hmm. You know, you're there to have fun, mm -hmm. and what you said, you know, when when you get mad and let that affect, like it affects you. Like your, I don't want to say your day was like ruined, but you let that affect you having fun yeah, when you so, went out to play mm -hmm. and you paid to play mm -hmm. to enjoy your day yeah so again in the short term right you get views yep. and views and engagement and likes and subscriptions that all e turns into money on youtube or whatever social media platform you use right mm -hmm. they cut you a paycheck you make rent for the month that's that's great good for you man uh we're, we're happy for you but also but the long term right the long-term effects of this is that at the end of day right like we said in, in earlier is that you guys are a model in the community yep you guys are there because you guys are at the forefront of the community right reaching outsiders who don't play airsoft mm -hmm. right and and also people who are in the community right uh, you guys are setting an example on like how to behave at the field yes and i think the reason why this whole like cheater justice for example like, like the also the, the the example that i provided about like the guy saying like oh yeah next time i see this cheater i'm just gonna light him the heck up or whatever mm. right i think a part of that Right, uh, part of that is contributed by the fact that you know there are there are very popular videos out there like that where content creators, you know, post videos of like, oh yeah, I was playing this game, I was enjoying my day, then oh, there was a cheater that appealed on the appeared on the appeared, field, a wild cheater. Yeah, appeared. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh. so, 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 so next time I see him, I'm gonna light him up full auto, even though full auto is not allowed or whatever. Yeah. And then they and, now you're breaking the yeah, rules. Yeah, and it's like, oh, like justice, justice was served. Oh, I taught, I sure taught him. I, I think, I think. Uh, those that kind of content and that being kind of popularized on the internet has sort of lent uh, a hand, uh, yeah, a hand in that, and you know it, it kind of in a way promotes that behavior, or, or more or less because that content exists out there, right? Yeah. It's popular. Uh, I think there's like an unspoken kind of thing, like oh, like you have permission to do this now, like this is acceptable behavior. Yeah, when it shouldn't be. It, it's it's not, and uh, and again, yeah, like as a content creator, you guys are. 
you guys are the forefront members of the community. Yeah. You know? I mean, typically Airsoft, you know, we do it very selfishly. We're doing it for us to have fun by ourselves or with friends. But when you decide to make videos and have a presence online, you are deciding to to show your image of Airsoft to the world, right? Yeah. And what you put out will speak volumes mm-hmm. uh, in just the content that you create. Like, you could be a very nice guy off the field, but if if all you post is toxicity, it's like, why? There's, yeah. I mean, again, we're not here to, to bash anyone. And, you know, we are all in this hobby to have fun. Uh, and some people make a living, you know, hopefully again, good for you if, if you're able to do that. But, um, for like, I think because you and I boys are in a very, uh, interesting position. We, we create content on YouTube, but we also work for uh, a company that, uh, not only caters to airsofters, but is actively trying to, um, show airsoft in a positive light and get airsofters or get people into airsoft. And even before I started working at GI, that like showing airsoft in a positive light was something that I've always done. Even like back before uh, uh, I started working at airsoft GI, I have my own like airsoft channel, and there's like old old gameplay footage that I put up, and it's like really poorly done. I edited it myself, whatever. Um, but uh every like i think i have like two or three videos but i removed any time i encountered a cheater because i didn't want that shown i didn't want to show that yeah. like oh some dude's not calling this hits like oh, damn, like not only does it look bad on camera it's just like why would i want to put that negative image out there yeah yeah because at the end of the day you know realistically of course you're gonna encounter cheaters i'm pretty sure everyone who's watching or listening to this podcast right now everyone who watches our videos or subscribe to us uh, i'm it's statistically it's inevitable that you will encounter cheaters when mm-hmm. you play uh, yeah that is an unfortunate reality you know not everybody is going to be willing to follow the rules but again like but that doesn't have to be the focus yep you know of of the hobby that doesn't have to be something that we really have to pay attention on cuz at the end of the day you know we we can't force people to follow the rules we yes. can't you know because it's a game and it's a hobby people can either choose to follow the rules yep. or not and then it's it's my decision right like i don't want to play with those you know that cheater yeah of course yeah which is why you know like i, I don't i don't make any content like outside of, <laughs> outside of here i don't really make content about airsoft but again Same. when i just personally just play right because again like uh, regardless, or re- regardless of whether I would like to, um, personally, I I try not to think about it. But I think the unfortunate reality, at least for you and I, is that we, to an extent, to an extent, we we do set an example for how people should behave in the airsoft community. You know, whether it's on camera or not. Yes, yeah, of course. So you know, for me, like, there's no reason why I should ever be mad at you know during an airsoft game. Oh yeah. There, there's no reason to. And you know, again, if I encounter a cheater and if I know they're cheating. Then I the the easiest thing to do, not be mad. Is literally you just walk to a different, move to a different area of the field where that cheater is not there, mm-hmm. and you continue to shoot at people who want to play the game and have fun and have have fun and yeah. have fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even when uh, the first time I went to BB Wars in Texas, um, you know, I was hearing it through the grapevine, like, oh, they're not calling their hits, and I was hearing from the other team. My team wasn't calling hands. I was like, oh, I'm nipping this in the butt. And like before, like one of the games started, I like I got the megaphone. I was like, hey guys, listen. I heard people aren't calling their hits. I don't want that to be us. We all came here to have a good time. We all came yep. here to play. Yep. I want us to enjoy this. Yep. I want us to all have fun yep. and you know shoot toy guns yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with our friends. Yeah. So uh like even on the field, like like if I hear someone like yelling, like "Hey, call your head!" I'm like, "Hey, don't do that, dude." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't do that. Yeah. What? Why? It's not gonna it's not gonna encourage them to even want to call their hits. Yeah, yeah. It's just gonna want them. It's just gonna encourage this hypothetical cheater to be like, "Oh, I'm not a cheater." Yeah. Blah blah. And they're just gonna just run away from you and like not. It's not gonna encourage any better behavior. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think I think the overall solution. I think, for example, like. Um, for example, 
when it comes to that kind of dark side of content creation when it comes to like negative public like for example like a cheater video like i'm not saying that i don't think the solution is to completely just get rid of cheater videos entirely you know like maybe, maybe there were cheaters maybe you do want a more honest look into the airsoft community that's fine mm -hmm. yeah. i think that's perfectly fine and you'd be like yeah this person wasn't calling their heads but i think there there's no like uh every time there's a confrontation with a cheater it gets very hostile and gets very aggressive you know and i think that uh, a, a healthier way is uh, is to address cheating like that is like you know if if you were able to have an actual discussion with the cheater like hey man like i noticed you know i was shooting you here and like i noticed you weren't calling your hits like you know did you know that i, I hit you or whatever and you kind of encourage hey man like we're all here to have fun you know and, and uh and play this game together you know it only works if everyone does it yep. you know like um I'm not and not not directly accusing of someone cheating, but be like, hey, like next time, like if you think that you're hit, do you mind just calling yourself out, you know, and kind of kind of mediating, you know, w without escalating or without getting super hostile or yep. like, breaking out to a fight or doing some like mag dump justice, you know, like I I, I think that that's a much more healthier kind of content uh, that we can see because at the end of the day, people are still gonna want to click it because it's, it's like a cheater video. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, because these celebrities or these influencers, content creators out there being at the forefront of the community, yeah, right. Like they're they're the ones bringing outsiders who are not airsofters into airsoft. And if they're able to see that, oh, there's a cheater, but oh, he handled it. You mm -hmm. know, he handled it really well. He handled it very maturely. Yep. And like, oh, okay, so there might be cheaters in airsoft. That's inevitable, right? But you know, it gets resolved. Yeah. Kind of peacefully calmly you know and everyone kind of understands and i think that will make the hobby so much more healthier yeah i mean even i have seen uh cheater videos where it was dealt with very well like mm -hmm. there it was resolved mm -hmm. um and you know no issues like it was corrected and uh like the couple of videos that i've seen is like like uh it'll have it maybe in the middle of the of the video you know the, the way that you story tell right it'll have it maybe in the middle of the video and then it might get to like an escalating point of like oh you know like no he's not calling his hits and then like it gets there's going to be a, re a resolution to it in the end but i would say if you do encounter that if you are encountering a cheater be the bigger person and resolve it correctly and peacefully yeah and then uh just to also touch on another i guess kind of dark side of uh airsoft is uh i guess we would call like negative reviews hmm. uh, yeah so again again yes there are a difference between good airsoft guns and, oh reviews and, yeah, of products yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, and okay, like okay. and like bad airsoft guns yeah there, there's objective facts some guns are more reliable and have more you know available parts out there for upgrading or repairing oh yes than others and that's fine uh but i i think i think one of the things that kind of dissuades some people into getting to airsoft is like you know they watch a review oh this is trash you know don't don't freaking buy this oh like, this yes is, this is terrible blah blah, blah. like see and, yeah and, and again like as a retailer of course it sounds very rich coming from you know a retailer who's trying to sell products yeah but you know at the end of the day i think a, a big part of the hobby is you know getting guns that you find cool and that you like yeah and you get to play with them yeah and, and sometimes yeah it does suck you know that like uh so, some guns just might not be as reliable yep. or perform as well as other guns and like yeah that does suck but at the end of the day like you still get to run around with a cool looking gun that shoots bbs oh yeah for and, sure. I, and for me like that's a huge part of the hobby oh yeah yeah so actually i was talking about this in one of my live streams and i kind of just went off a tangent yeah um someone came into the chat i'm not gonna name drop but if you know who you are you know who you are what's up <laughs> um <clears throat> i was talking about how uh i mean online there are going to be trolls and there are going to be people that voice their opinions because you know they're hiding behind the screen behind the keyboard yada yada but like i've seen people that like will talk trash to like a little kid someone who's coming out for the first time like, oh you bought that why did you buy that oh you should have got this instead like dude i'm fairly sure that kid worked up like a mm -hmm. lot of allowance did mm -hmm. a lot of chores mm -hmm. you know somehow got that that airsoft gun that he's been wanting mm -hmm. okay and and he more than likely loves that gun yeah leave it's, him it's, alone it's his, it's his gun yeah, yeah leave him alone okay seriously it's like why are you because you have your bias why are you going to affect someone else's like 
Let, let's, let's try to adjust the tone where it's not super teachy. Oh, yeah, exactly. So it's like, like, oh, like, oh, you know, I know about that gun. Maybe you, you could, you should look at this gun too. Or like the, just, it irritates me because the way that I saw it happen a few times, it's just like you have, and it's the quote unquote elitists that believe that all of their opinions are right and none of the well, things I, that they I, do I, are wrong. I don't want to label these people. First of all, let's, let's not label them. No, I'm a label. <laughs> no, no, let's, let's not do that. That's not, that's not constructive, but um yeah i mean yeah definitely what cisco said is very true you know like yes there are objectively better performing airsight guns out there yeah at, at yes. different at varying price points you know and of course everyone believes in a certain brand for example for me like i love kdwa oh you know, yeah i love kdwa i swear by them uh if people recommend <laughs> ask for recommendations usually i'll try to recommend them kdwa because i love kdwa now there's also a lot of people who very much dislike KWA. Very true. They've had very bad experiences with KWA. My heart goes out to them. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then also, you, you know, you see that with certain brands like Crytek. You know, there's tons of people on the internet that live and die by Crytek. Yep. And to them, I tell them, well, you know, good, good. Yeah, that they, they're, they're good guns. You know, opinion, like my personal opinion, like, yeah, I think Crytek is good, but, you know, like that's not a brand that I live and die by, you know, but. Yep. Yeah, like I guess like dissing people's guns, you know, or like they, they make a review kind of like trashing, uh, you know, trashing a certain gun just because it doesn't live up to their standards. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, I think the worst airsoft gun out there is the airsoft gun that you don't like, like uh, or like you you have one that you don't personally love, right? That's the worst airsoft gun. For example, like for example, what should I say for? Yeah, so for example, like I have a friend who got into airsoft some time ago and he he really loved the Tavor. Okay. I love the Tavor too, actually. Uh, but he but he committed to, you know, buying a, an airsoft Tavor. Mm -hmm. And it was an electric blowback one. And it had tons of issues. You know, the the trigger response on a Tavor is not the best. Right? Yeah. And like it was constantly breaking, you know. But he Which Tavor did it get? I, I don't remember, man. Might might have been like one the Elite Force one. It, it was a licensed one. I mean, there I, were a few lessons. Yeah, oh, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely wasn't the Aries one, but it was, mm. yeah. Um, yeah, tons of issues, all this stuff, you know, and, you know, people are telling you, like, yo, why'd you buy a Tavor? Dude, th that thing sucks, you know? And I think also on the review side on the internet, yeah, there were, I remember there were some reviews out there that kind of trashed the Tavor, like, don't, don't buy this or whatever. And yeah, of course, there's better guns out there, but he loved that gun because, you know, like, that was a cool gun to him. Yeah, he liked that yeah, model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... He, you know, he poured a lot of love and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into it, you know, constantly trying to repair it and get it upgraded and stuff. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, for him, that was part of the hobby because at the end of the day, like, he loved that gun. Yeah, Yeah, he, for he sure. loved that gun. And and it, it just sucks because I think there's a lot of... Because I was a victim of that, right? Like, I personally was a victim because, like, I really wanted it to board too. Mm. And I wanted to buy one. And during that time when, you know, this buddy of mine and I, you know, we, we both had... We both saved up some money. We're mm. both going to buy some guns together. You know, I, I watched, you know, some reviews about the Tavor. Oh, like, I wanted to see how it does. And then, you know, I, I saw, like, reviewers saying, oh, this sucks. Don't buy it. Mm. You know, oh, it's like, you know, it's a pain it's pain the ass to work on. And, like, so many proprietary parts and, like, trigger response and all this, blah, blah, blah. It sucks. Don't buy it. And so, you know, I was a victim. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I guess it really is bad. Mm. And, and, you know, like, I don't want to. So I ended up getting stuck with another, you know, generic M4. Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, it was a KWA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you, you know but i was you know it, it left me kind of dissatisfied at the end because like i saw my friend and he he was having so much fun with his tavor because he he loved that gun yeah you know and even though my kid away outperformed his tavor you know i i i couldn't help but to feel like i was kind of missing out mm. you know be, because of you know my my choice to or my um i ended up getting like persuaded not to get one yeah you know see so i'm on the opposite end of that one gun that i own that i really love is the l96 or mm -hmm. mk96 mm -hmm. bolt action sniper rifle yeah um at the time when i was looking into sniper rifles uh people were telling me oh just get a vsr 10 or jg bar 10 or uh uh it was the electric dragonov I forget who made it, but you know there were other options out there. I was like, no, nah, I just love the L ninety six. Yeah, and I got it. Mm. Regardless of what everyone said, everyone was, you know, talking trash about like, oh, why'd you get that? I mean, I upgraded mine. I use mine. Mm. I love it. 
Mm-hmm. I still love it. Even yeah. though I don't use it yeah. uh, nowadays, I still love that model. It's just like when I first was looking at it, it just it's kind of like the P90 where yeah. it looked like a little futuristic, yeah, yeah. you know, very different. And that was just so appealing to me. And mm-hmm. every time that I use that sniper rifle, uh, regardless if I got kills or not, I was having fun. Mm-hmm. Like it was such a blast for me. And I, like, even though people were talking trash about it, I was like, I don't care. I don't care. This is dope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, Siri. <laughs> anyway, Siri, shut up. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I, I think that does kind of, especially like I guess the younger audience or people that are really into like the, the quote unquote immersions. You mm. know, sometimes like. Uh, it negatively affects airsoft just because uh, part of the beauty is like there's a plethora there are oh, tons yes. there are tons of guns out there that are that you know all look different all perform different you mm-hmm. know and I, I think that should be kind of the joy of airsoft is like you get to you get to play with you know toy guns like like exotic looking crazy looking toy guns oh yes yeah that you might not even be able to afford or legally own yeah you know certain uh, in a real yeah, firearm. real firearm world yeah for example right like for example like let's say like the scar Yes. Right? A scar is prohibitively expensive. <laughs> prohibitively <laughs> expensive. Yes. Yeah, to, to own in real life. Yeah. But with an airsoft version, you just, you know, yeah, it is a top end airsoft gun, so you are going to be dropping hundreds of dollars on it. Yeah. But nowhere near the thousands you have to. You oh, know, yes, of on, course. On a real one. And like that, that should be fun. Like, or for example, like an ACR. Mm-hmm. From Masada. Again, crazy cool looking gun. Yep. Yeah, and, and people, you know, get put off by it because it, you know, there's some reviews out there that say, Oh, it's trash, don't buy it. Yeah. But why not? Like I mean the Masada was another gun yeah, yeah. that like people were saying like was trash yeah, exactly. at the time. Yeah, exactly. But I bought one anyways. Yeah. It was cool. I still yeah. love mine. Yeah, because it's because <laughs> it's super cool, man. Like yeah, so you know that that's that's a very big aspect of the hobby that I think that a lot of people are kind of discounting because that like uh, I think a lot of guys out there, especially like social media influencers and stuff, uh, they're very big on like the the competition aspect, right? Mm. Like, oh, I'm gonna crazy range, crazy rate of fire, crazy triggers, and that's all great. Yep. I, I, there's definitely uh, that's also a huge part of the hobby is like performance building. Oh yes. Or like power sure. power playing, you know, power gaming, <laughs> and um, <laughs> no, there, there's nothing wrong with that. There, there, what do they nothing... call it for? Uh, for um, for like uh, tuning computers. Uh, I don't know. Overclocking? Overclocking. Yeah. Over, yeah. But but anyway, yeah. So, yeah, that is a big aspect. But also, a big part of the hobby that I think a lot of people initially get drawn into is like, yo, I get all these crazy cool fake guns I can shoot BBs at people with, you know? Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, for me, like, I, like, who cares about the performance so much? You know, like, what, like, why don't you, you know, like, just go why don't you fun. just, yeah, find a gun that, that you think is super cool yeah. and just, and just run with it? You know, like, for example, like, like, I have my, I have my uh, Stoner LMG, mm-hmm. yeah that 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 I ended up buying and yeah there's not a lot of parts out for it you know it, it is kind of proprietary it's gonna be hard to kind of upgrade but at the end of the day like I love that I love that machine gun it's so cool yeah, yeah. and I I feel like a bu- like, like I feel like a badass every time I roll up in the field with that like it's yeah, super sure. fun yeah I've taken that out to mill some events and stuff yeah it's not as it's not gonna be as accurate as like a super well tuned like I don't know like a saw or whatever yeah that has tons of parts out there for it it's it's not gonna be but Again, like it, like I just feel super cool shooting that thing. Yeah. And regardless of people get hit by it or not, like I don't care. I'm shooting this thing. I'm, I'm shooting sh- it at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and for me, like I feel super cool doing that. Yeah. You know. And so I, I I really hope like more members of the community get to get to kind of paint airsoft in that in that light. Yeah. You know, like they're like more pretty much like half the hobby is you know you dress up in a cool outfit and you get a cool gun. Well, yeah, so shoot people with it. I think something that kind of rounds it out is, you know, airsoft. You could do whatever you want. If you want to do, you know, a European style loadout or a Russian style mm-hmm. loadout or an American style mm-hmm. loadout or do something completely different that is your own, mm-hmm. you can do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe it's uh, also a part of, um, as a person, don't let other people swayed you differently yeah um but in terms of the influencers you know you do you're going to put out content that you like that you want to Mm -hmm. put out and regardless if you want to or not you're going to be influencing someone's opinion if they see your video yeah so you know at the end of the day like like the whole like power gaming aspect of airsoft like that that's already like 
I think the main audience for that is for people who have already played airsoft. Yeah. People that are already into airsoft and they understand the limitations of airsoft as like a technology. Yep. So they're trying to maximize that. Uh, but I think for someone getting into airsoft, right? Like most of it is because of the cool factor. Oh, right. Yes. Like, like, like those, like those sniper compilation videos, right? Is not only is a sniper shot in present cool, but like they get to see videos of like, you know, 50, 100, maybe hundreds of all these like-minded people mm -hmm. all with these crazy cool loadouts you know with their cool airsoft guns and they're all playing this sniper just happens to you know snipe people with it right and even that sniper you know wearing a super cool ghillie suit with a super cool like low vis chest rig right yeah yeah so like there's that cool factor that really gets people into airsoft oh yeah right like even even like the milsom side of things right like whenever we have milsom videos that pop up on the mainstream is like you just see like hundreds of these like super like kitted out people all in uniform you know yep. yeah like it, at, at like these huge playing fields with, again with their super cool guns and so i think that like there's a lot of people out there that want to get into airsoft for the cool fact regardless of whether or not the gun is good or not mm -hmm. right uh, i think I, again i'm not saying that reviewers or independent reviewers should be dishonest I'm yeah. not saying that. Yeah, if, if the performance is lacking, yeah, like you you should address that, I think. Like that is yeah. your imperative to do so. But, you know, but kind of telling people you should buy it or you should not buy it, you know, like having that kind of opinion, I think sometimes it dissuades people from getting into airsoft. Yeah. Because they're like, "Oh, this gun I really like." That, that could be the cool. one thing. Yeah, yeah. And that, that gets uh, yeah, them into airsoft around. Yeah, that's the one gun I really want. This person telling me I shouldn't buy it cuz it's trash. So, well, then what's the point of playing? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I I think that like those content creators taking that into account, like we like most of the people that are drawn to airsoft are in it because of the costumes and because of the cool looking guns. Oh yes, yeah. And addressing that p part of the hobby, I think, is super crucial. And I think in the long run, the long term effect is that it helps people or it helps airsoft get painted in a positive light. It also draws more people into airsoft, you know, because it's it's more like a welcoming i used to say yes yeah so uh, yeah in the short term it might not do well it might not do as, as well as like a, oh airsoft caught on ca cheater caught on camera blah, blah blah like this cheater gets mag dump justice or like oh the worst airsoft gun i've ever owned blah 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 blah. Yeah. this gun is absolute garbage i lit it on fire this and that like yeah in the short term you know, it'll get views you know but in the long term you know how how does that affect the community as a whole how does that how people get into airsoft yep people who don't know anything about airsoft and are thinking about getting it and those are the videos that are coming out you know it's it's tough it's it it doesn't it doesn't seem very welcoming yeah and just like a little tidbit of advice i would say is if you are looking into you know trying to become a airsoft content creator to you know make some type of living don't don't try to uh, approach this as how do I grow the fastest? Because just like any viral video, you might be you might be hot for a couple of weeks, but you're gonna die down. Then yeah, as, as, as someone better. who yeah, someone who's part of this industry and other also other industries like the entertainment industry and stuff. Yeah, mo most of most of the growth comes from your personality, guys. Oh yeah, yeah, most of sure. like what what kind of. I hate using this word. What kind of vibe do you put out? I hate that. I hate that word. But but again, but, but that, that's like the most relatable word. Like what what the person? Vibes yeah, yeah. Like like what what kind of personality? Yeah. Like, oh gosh, they need to be so immaculate. Oh gosh. No, yeah. But yeah. what Bo I said like yeah. So I yeah. Content is content. The type of content like shocking content that's only gonna get you so far. Yeah. Like people stay around for your personality, which yep. is why if you look at all the top creators out there, they all have very unique personalities that people gravitate towards. Oh yeah. You know, so for sure. having that con having that personality that that's basically what drives you as a person. That's what drives longevity mm -hmm. and growth. Uh, if you want short term fast growth viral video and then you you fall off and you die. Yeah. That, 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 then, you, <laughs> and then you die. No, like the channel yeah, or it, whatever, the page. It just loses all momentum. Yeah. It, it, it lose, yeah it's like that clickbait kind of content. Yeah. And then you're only going to go as far as and people just video. see you. Yeah. People just see you for that. Yep. And people only see you as, oh yeah, he makes like a viral, I don't know, like, like cheater, blah, 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 magnum videos yeah. and this and that. And, and that, that it eventually just hurts you because you now you you feel like you're forced to constantly make those videos because mm -hmm. people only tune in for that content.
Yeah. So, yeah, personality goes a long way. And whether or not all, all of you guys out there admit it or not, you guys are all influencers. Mm-hmm. You guys are all influencers because at the end of the day, right, if you make an Instagram post about Airsoft or Instagram story or, I don't know, Facebook post mm-hmm. or a short YouTube clip or TikTok or whatever. Or a full there, YouTube video. Yeah. You guys are actually influencers because people still watch your content. Yes. Yeah, whether it's 10 people or 100 people or 1,000 people, right? You guys all kind of put Airsoft out there into the mainstream. So, you know, th- this this podcast or this whole discussion isn't just about uh, those who have like millions of subscribers or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it's also very applicable to you guys because at the end of the day, you guys are still putting content out there. You guys are all mm-hmm. representing, right, Airsoft as a community. And, you know, for us, like our dream, right, is to have a very open and mainstream community that people can easily get into. Oh, yes. They easily get into Airsoft and everyone, you know, welcomes and everyone, you know, plays nicely. Everyone treats everyone respectfully and nicely. Like mm-hmm. for us, that's our goal. Oh, yes. You know, so we're, we're just here to also not tell you, but to ask you guys to also take what we say into consideration and, you know, and kind of keep in mind whenever you guys are, you know, posting stuff out there. Is that you know you guys are the face of airsoft yep. you guys are the face of the community when no matter how small you might you may think that you are right whoever's in your social circle i'm sure there's more people who don't play airsoft than than who they do yep right so your your actions and how you put yourself out there will directly influence right other people what they think about airsoft as a hobby absolutely yeah so you guys actually probably make a bigger difference than you guys you know really think yeah then you give yourself credit for it yeah yeah because all right sorry guys there was a cut off in the mic but what i was saying is you know when you go out to uh you know family parties or gatherings with your friends whatever uh, you know airsoft more than likely will come up especially for me like whenever i go out airsoft always comes up because i'm the guy that airsofts but i take friends out i take family out to go play i i get them you know, introduce into it. I'll show them videos. And especially when I get to uh, get them onto the field and, uh, you know, help with their first time playing, uh, you know, t- from what I've seen, I haven't had a person have a bad experience when I've taken them out. So, like, I always make sure, like, they're having fun. They know what to do. They know what's going on. And uh, hopefully in turn, you know, if Airsoft ever comes up in a discussion with them, they have that positive experience to share with others. So then that just will give, you know, more like a catalyst, you know, for a conversation to introduce more people into Airsoft. Is that not close enough? Well, I, <laughs> I adjusted it because you, well, I adjusted your level to do this because you were doing this the whole time. Yeah, I was right here. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so... I guess just to wrap things up, our, our whole rambly rant, if you guys stuck around for this long, this <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. Uh, just to wrap it all up is, uh, yeah, like we were first, we were talking about content creators in general and influencers, but at the end of the day, all of you guys are influencers. All of you guys are the face of Airsoft. All of you guys are the forefront at this community because you guys are, uh, yeah, you, like I, I, it's inevitable for you guys to post pictures and video of you guys playing Airsoft. It's yeah. inevitable and people know you Airsoft. Uh, people around you know that you airsoft anyway whether or not you post videos or photos or not so you guys all represent the community and uh in however you guys behave on the field or off the field you know that represents or that paints a picture of how airsoft is as a community as a whole absolutely yeah and i i I think that uh that's something that we can all take to heart and like for us to kind of keep in mind right is like how like how how can i create my local environment how can i create my local field or, or my group of friends, right? How can we foster an environment that welcomes and opens new players to get into, you know, the hobby? Because at the end of the day, it's a hobby. And sometimes I think I'm guilty of this too. You know, we, we take the hobby too seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, when it does that, it, it's not welcoming. It's not inviting for people. And, yep. you know, as members of a community, as members of a hobby, that's our responsibility. That's our job. Yeah. The job we have is to have yeah. an open mind yeah. and, and so, be welcoming. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, other people. So this hobby can continue, right? Like, uh, we're we're kind of getting to a point right now that the original airsofters who play for the first time when airsoft got introduced introduced to the U.S. Right, most of those people already have like retired or moved away from airsoft because they're like too old to play. 
yeah. or, or they moved on to a different hobby and stuff. So there are constantly people exiting this hobby, right? Yes. And so in order to keep this alive, right, in order to keep the numbers from shrinking, people playing Airsoft, you know, we need to be welcoming to let the next generation in. Absolutely. Yeah, the next generation of players in and welcome, take them into the fold, right? So that way, you know, they can play Airsoft for a very long time and then, again, rinse and repeat, right? That that new generation has to foster the next generation to come and play. Yep. Right? So that that's the bigger picture that, you know, maybe not a lot of us really keep in mind when we, you know, go out to play Airsoft. But, yeah, I, I encourage you guys to, you know, to have, take that into mind, you know, next time you guys are out on the field or next time you guys are posting new video, new content, right? That, you know, we, you guys are responsible. We're all responsible for bringing in the next generation, to bring in, you know, outsiders of the hobby into, you know, into the fold. And that's how you keep a community thriving. That's how you keep, you know, a hobby alive. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and there, there's a lot of dead hobbies out there, guys. There's a lot of dying and dead hobbies out there that, you know, no, no one really plays or, or no one really does yeah you no know, yeah so and we don't want that to happen with airsoft yeah yeah definitely not you know like yeah if, if the hobby can continue to shrink man that means there's gonna be less events mm -hmm. that's gonna be less retailers out there you know supplying you guys with airsoft gear yep, less products there's gonna be less fields open mm -hmm. you know, to host events for you guys right so you know that so everyone suffers when the hobby shrinks absolutely so i think the biggest takeaway from this is uh be mindful of when you play but you know you know try to be active in in showing airsoft in a positive light so yeah let us know what you think about our, the topic of airsoft content yeah, creators. We apologize for yeah we ranted rambling, a little while <laughs> rambliness yeah. but yeah i mean i think this is you know something that was good to talk about something yeah. oh and also to shed light yeah again as we said before one of our dreams is to go out of state because right now we're we're kind of in California, we're, we're mm -hmm. like pretty much in California <laughs> for, <laughs> for all our stuff. But you know, we wanna we wanna expand because you know because we got a taste of that. You know, we got a taste of playing it at Phoenix, Arizona. Yes, that was super fun. Oh yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, and and all you guys out there in Arizona, you guys are great. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. yeah we we all 100%. love you guys out there. Yeah, and of course, everyone at D fourteen Airsoft are our second home field away from home. Yeah, yeah, and that place is super dope. If you guys are in the Dallas area. Mm -hmm. yeah, go check sure, them yeah, out make sure to check out d14 airsoft they're they're super cool and again yeah we, we love everyone out there at d14 you know we always have a good time you know we you guys are always super chill and you guys are very uh kind-hearted yes yeah, not, not as mean-spirited as yeah, some of my previous experiences in other <laughs> fields but anyway um but yeah but we want to we expand out you know we, yeah. we want to keep visiting other fields across the u.s and that's that's one thing that we really want to do oh yes absolutely and, yeah and so but you know again as we say in other all our other previous videos when we mentioned this is the only way to make this happen is to obviously support airsoft gi because mm -hmm. they they pay our bills and mm -hmm. you know and also this channel helps as well you yeah. Know, yeah yeah keep 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 paying our bills so that yeah. way we can you know we can justify to our boss <laughs> say hey hey yeah we we can yeah okay can, can we please fly out to <laughs> this place or can we please drive up to this place you know so we can meet you guys you know yeah. so so uh, subscribe for more content and give us a like if you haven't already. It does uh, help out, as Boaz said. And Airsoft GI will support us directly. So if you need any of your Airsoft goodies, pick up them all at Airsoft GI. Uh, use the Wombo Combo for the best savings in Airsoft. And don't forget to tune in to my live streams where I'm giving away free Airsoft goodies. So tune in for that. But yeah, and that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. Later. Peace. <laughs>